You know when you launch a game, and at the main menu you can just tell you're gonna have a good time? I had this experience with Dread Templar, and once again I'm having this experience with Incision. Now I had been loosely following this game, and by loosely following I mean I had it wishlisted on Steam and knew nothing else about it. That is until I got a Twitter DM from Incision's publisher, Hyper Strange, on Monday. They aren't sponsoring this video, they didn't pay me anything, but they did throw me a free key to play the game early. Perfect timing, as I stream on Monday and post videos on Friday, but I figured they would have an embargo so I wouldn't be able to do anything, but nope, they said they don't believe in embargo. Embargoes. I could do what I wanted. That is super cool to see that Hyper Strange has this much faith in their game. And if you're watching this video on Friday, the day it comes out, this game is out right now. You can buy it. Incision is definitely a game that's going to stick around in my mind for quite a while. Let's talk about why. Hey, Jarek here. Yep, it's that time. It's time for Into the AM. I don't usually like to start a video right away with a sponsor, but this is the only way I could find this video to flow naturally. Either way, it doesn't matter too much because I genuinely do like Into the AM. Into the AM make comfortable clothes that don't have tags to scratch the back of your neck. They're very soft and they're very durable. On top of all of that, they look good. There's so many different designs you have to choose from. Now, I wear these shirts everywhere. In fact, I wear these when I go mountain biking because they're so comfortable. I completely cover these things in dirt, go and wash them, hang them up, and when they dry, they're still just as soft as when I got them. And if it's not a shirt you want, they have plenty of other things like say this Into the AM hat. They have a few other hat designs as well. They also have tank tops, hoodies, coats, so they make more than just shirts. And as of right now, until the 18th, they're having an end of season sale. So if you're watching this video the weekend it comes out, you can go to their site and get a bunch of deals. But if you're watching it after that date, then don't fret, I have you covered. You can get 10% off site-wide by going to intotheam.com slash dragon shirts. And yes, this 10% off does stack on top of their bundle deals. You can get three basic tees for 45 or three graphic tees for 60. I've worked with Into the AM for quite a long time now, and I genuinely do like their products. That's why I wear them so much. So a huge thanks goes to Into the AM for sponsoring this video. Now let's talk about incision. It's like dusk trapped inside the super gore nest. This is a real quote. And yeah, that's pretty accurate. This game is weird and I found myself captivated by the everything. Now I thought this bizarre world would only be a couple of levels, but no, it's just the whole game. It's like they gave Rot Flesh crack. I'm not saying a lot because Rot Flesh is already a really weird game. Okay, but seriously, it's more than just weird. This universe is captivating. That's why I said this game is going to stick around in my head for a long time. It also helps that it's really fun. Everything comes together to make this incredibly odd, but immersive game. The music is something you would expect more from a horror game rather than a boomer shooter. Yet it still has that energy required to fit the fast paced combat. I cannot rant enough about this music. It's not necessarily something I would listen to outside of the game, but man does it fit this game well. As for the actual graphics, well, they fit the early 3D retro style of boomer shooter that you've seen many times before, yet somehow it manages to stand out and look unique. I definitely am of the opinion that we have a lot of boomer shooters, perhaps too many, and too many of them just look like Quake. Don't get me wrong, it's fine if you're inspired by Quake, it was a revolutionary game but when every game looks similar, they tend to blend together. That's not a problem this game has. So yeah, they didn't reinvent the wheel graphically, but this art style more than carries the game. As for the actual PC release, it's pretty solid. I didn't have any mouse acceleration issues, there wasn't an absurd amount of motion blur, this game has an FOV slider and it never crashed on me. Overall, it's a pretty solid release. But I did find one kind of serious bug. If you pause the game and then change your controls, you can't unpause the game again, the only thing you can do is load. This is a bigger problem than you may realize for reasons I'll talk about later. This bug will most likely be fixed by launch, but in case it isn't, well, it's a problem that exists. But that's it, that's quite literally the only bug I came across, it's the only problem I was able to find with this game, it's just a solid PC release. So what about the story? I've talked about this weird universe, something has to be going on here. And something definitely is, 
I wish I could tell you what that is though. This isn't necessarily a negative thing. This game has me incredibly curious, confused. I want to know what's happening. It's one of those games that doesn't outright give you the story. It doesn't shove things in your face. And in my opinion, that's the best way to do it. It seems society has collapsed and you're in some sort of machine from hell. I don't know who your character is, but not even the main character sounds normal. I don't know what my main goal is here. It could be to escape. It could be to destroy whatever this machine I think I'm in is. I'm, I'm so confused. As I said, being confused in this case is somehow a good thing. As you're wandering around, you will come across these green sparks. Look at them long enough and they'll give you a little bit of context. This is nice, it's atmospheric storytelling. It doesn't shove the story in your face. It lets you look around the environment on your own. This is doubled down by this game having secrets. I am so bad at finding secrets. They could be in many different places. You may be required to kick down a wall or maybe it's hiding behind a blood waterfall. The main point here is that you are going to want to explore, both to find the secrets and to find little bits of lore so you can piece together what's happening. As for the gameplay, well, it's another boomer shooter. But I say that not in a negative way. This is one of the better ones I have played. This game plays so smooth. Moving in the air feels very different from about any other boomer shooter I've played, but not in a bad way. You can double jump and you almost float in this game. You kind of just stay at your peak height for a little distance before you start falling. And you have a ton of control over your drift in the air. This is great for combat. When you're about to be surrounded by enemies, having that much aerial control is nice. You don't have a dash or a slide or any sort of boost in any way, however your base movement speed is so fast I never felt like I needed one. You do have a kick, it's not exactly very useful for upfront fights, you're probably just gonna die because these enemies do a lot of damage to you. However, it is pretty useful to kick explosive barrels at enemies in situations like that. Okay, so your movement is fluid and that's really good because that's the base of your combat. So what about the weapons? Oh man, these weapons. These things are fantastic. The starting pistol is the one I actually want to talk about the most, so I'll save that for last. The second weapon you get in the game is a quad-barreled pump-action shotgun. Your default firing mode is a regular pump-action shotgun, but the split function will fire four shotgun shells, one right after another. This basically blends your normal pump-action with your super shotgun. It's great. <laughs> Your machine gun is just a machine gun, but I got much more use out of the split function, which is an incendiary grenade. Your rocket launcher reminds me a lot of the law in Killing Floor 1. And yeah, just like your shotgun, a single shot will fire one rocket, but your split function will fire four. Pretty devastating. And this thing is called Kitty. Yep, that's the name. Oh man, this thing is so good. This does not use traditional ammo. I mean, of course it doesn't look at it. But what I mean by that is that this weapon doesn't have regular ammo pickups. Instead, the ammo it uses is blood. If you wanna get more ammo for this weapon, you need to jib enemies. And that is such a smart design. Making an enemy in this game explode is so rewarding and satisfying and fun, and you always want to do it anyway. This gives you a tangible reason to do that. It's like a reward on top of a reward. Anyway, this is pretty similar to, say, the Unmaker in Doom Eternal and Doom 64. It is very powerful. I would have said BFG, but it doesn't function at all like the BFG. I mean, it doesn't really function like the Unmaker, but it's your strongest weapon. Just keep that in mind. The regular firing mode will fire four, so sticky bombs that are very strong. And the split function fires this blood saw blade. Yeah, you want to keep as much ammo on this thing as possible to bail you out of combat. And speaking of jibbing, your melee weapon is not the most useful in combat, but it is very satisfying. You have your regular melee swing, of course, but its split function just does this. And of course you get a minigun as you would come to expect. The split function just spins the barrels up, but this thing is way stronger than you might think. This is easily one of your strongest weapons in the game. It jibs most enemies. There's a reason the ammo is somewhat reserved for this thing, but you are allowed to just kind of go ham with it from time to time. And last but not least is your starting magnum. You get this thing right at the beginning of the game. For the longest time, I thought it was just sort of a somewhat weak, not entirely weak, but just a pistol. You guys want to see the most useful secondary split function to a weapon? So you have your Magnum, right? You know, and it's it's okay, it's a fairly strong pistol, kind of accurate, kind of inaccurate, I don't know, whatever, it's useful. It's split function, though. 
There's nothing more. That's that's just it. This is a split function. <laughs> oh, it's not useless. Thank you. Thank you, chat. You were smarter than I am. You just have to time it. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> I have a newfound love for the revolver now. This is one of the best starting pistols out of any game I played. It just deletes all starting and medium strength enemies. To make things even better, since it jibs enemies, it gives you ammo for the kitty. I am so glad that chat pointed out how split function works. I would have never known otherwise. Okay, so that's all nice, but it doesn't mean a whole lot if both the enemies or the arenas aren't good. Thankfully, this game doesn't suffer in any of those ways. The enemies, to be honest, aren't the most revolutionary in function. I mean, you've seen most of these before. They run at you and try to hit you, or they shoot at you at range. Thankfully, none of them are hit scanners. However, they are fun to fight, because you do need to prioritize some enemies over the others, and also, just look at these weird designs. The original Doom games had awesome music for its time, even if they were mostly just plagiarized. I knew it. They absolutely blend in with this world, and I don't know, I just can't help but feel curious about whatever the hell they are. As for the map designs, well, the arenas are fun to fight in, and the map designs are more than just walking into a room, getting locked in that room, having to kill the enemies, then keep going. It never does that. The maps will loop in on themselves, and they usually are designed in a way that doesn't get me lost. Now, occasionally I would miss something in my face and walk around for a bit, but it was very rare that that happened. These maps are designed in an overall intuitive way. So now that I've praised the game a bunch, I have to complain about something, right? Like there has to be something bad about this game. Well, there is one thing I have to complain about, and it's kind of a big thing. There are no checkpoints in this game. Now that would be fine, but there's also no quick saves. If you die, you are redoing that entire level. I really don't like this, and I think this needs to be changed. Now, it's not as bad as that because you do have extra lives. If you die, you immediately use that life. However, you only have 50 health, which I think if you're going to do this, give me 100 health if I die. If you lose all those lives, you restart the level all over again. There's a couple of levels where this can be a real problem. One of them is a boss level where it's not terribly long, but you do have to do some things before you get to the boss, and it's just annoying to die to this boss and then spawn at the very beginning and have to get to him again. Like, I just want to go and try again. In that case, it was made worse by the fact that when you load into a level, it default states you to walking instead of running. This is like Doom where it's always run or always walk. There's no stamina or sprinting or anything like that. You really don't have a reason to be walking. So I think the default movement speed should just be running. Anyway, the other level where I can see this being a big problem is that the level was fairly long and it's capped off by a big battle. Imagine dying at the end and then having to redo the whole thing over again. Like, no, I just want to try that one battle again. Like, there definitely needs to either be checkpoints, at least in the middle of the level, or just quick saves. I don't think you need to sacrifice the life system, because Doom Eternal had lives and checkpoints, and that worked fine. But that's it. Like, quite literally, that is the only complaint to have about this game. It is fantastic. Now, the game right now is in early access. It took me about three hours to beat what's currently there. Right now, it's just chapter one. The plan is they want to release chapter two, six to nine months down the line. Keep in mind, game development is not easy. There is still a lot of work they need to do, so that's just what they're shooting for. But my main final opinion on this game is that it is 100% worth playing, and you should definitely go out of your way to try it out. Even if you're getting tired of all the Quake-like boomer shooters, this one stands out as being different in its own way. And I think that's it. I want to give a huge thanks to my sponsor, Into the AM. Check that link down below, intotheam.com slash dragon shirts, to get the current deal and sale at the moment. I also want to give a huge thanks to everyone that joined me over on Twitch while I stream this game, twitch.tv slash Jarek for Gaming Dragon. If you subscribe, you get to see my videos at least one week at a time, usually earlier. And of course, I want to give a big thanks to you for watching this video.